Hi, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to do a little bit something different. Uh, I've noticed that there's a little uh, author tube tag going around on, on YouTube, I suppose, uh, although this video will be um, everywhere else too. But uh, um, I guess nominally I'm part of author tube. I am a writer and I'm on BitChute and I'm on YouTube and uh, trying to put my name out there on, on Rumble as well, so I figured I'd just try and do this. And basically, it's a, I think it's a work in progress. So it's a series of um, 10 questions. I had to print it out because I'm talking to an actual camera and not my computer. Uh, so, so excuse the holding up the piece of paper. But it's about uh, 10 questions about what I'm working on right now. Uh, to, to be honest, what I'm actually working on right now as, in, as of the past few days, it's, it's really a short story. Uh, but I think this is about like novels and things that you're working on. So I'll be talking about the novel that I'm going to get back to probably in, in a week or two or something, depending on how, how things go. Um, my short stories are pretty short. You know, they're, they're not a work in progress for very long, unless you're kind of doing something wrong, at least in my opinion. But anyway, so getting into the novel that I'm kind of working on is uh, question number one is what is the working title of your book? Uh, and right now I'm going with um, uh, Portal to the Unknown. Uh, it, it's a can you, it's a portal fantasy sort of. Uh, so yeah, it's, I'm going with Portal of the Unknown. Titles tend to change a lot for me. I have found that sometimes I don't know what the title of the book is until I'm almost done with it. Uh, I don't remember how I came up with Saga the Scout. Um, I think that one just sort of came to me or something like that. Memories in the City was originally called um, uh, My Blade is Quick um, because it's kind of like a spinoff from Mickey Spillane's My Gun is Quick, one of his books. And then towards the end, I think I was like a few thousand words from the end of the book, I realized Memories in the City actually made more sense. So Portal Under the Stars is my working title. We'll, we'll see what actually gets published. Um, it could be, you know... Could be totally different in a few months. Uh, so where where did you get the idea? Where did the idea come from for your book? There, uh, I think probably the the thing that's kickstarted the book because there's another one that says what is your inspiration? So I'm gonna do this in like old two parter. Um, I think the original idea was the sort of basically the opening chapter of I like the idea of a young man in a place receiving a message that he should not be receiving that and, and really the opening chapter is this uh, the character is uh, revisiting his grandfather's old farmhouse N nobody really knows that he's there it, it's empty he just went there on a lark he just took day a day off from work and then drove out there uh, to visit it and as he's about to leave this SUV drives up and this guy gets out and says, I have a letter for you, and I need to deliver it to you at this time on this day. And so it's start off with that sort of kind of mystery of like, oh, well, what would be in that letter? What would be the message? What, uh, how would that person uh, know that, that the main character was there? That, that sort of thing, just kind of running with those sort of mysteries, and that kind of fueled my, my writing for a long time. So it was just that kind of playing with that idea of get, getting a message, uh, getting an impossible message is what I kind of call it. Uh, what genre does your book fall under? Um, I think of it as a science fantasy. It's, uh, um, yeah, that, that's probably what I'd call it. it it's, it's not a fantasy in the sense of elves and dwarves and that sort of thing. And it's not quite science fiction like Star Trek. It's like science fantasy. I have another uh, video where I talk about the difference between science fiction and science fantasy, and, and that'll kind of give you an idea of like why I'd put my book in that, that genre. Uh, which actors would you choose to play in your movie rendition? I actually don't really know. I don't really think in those terms. Some, sometimes I do. Sometimes I have a celebrity in mind uh, but in general, I, I kind of write my characters the same way that I sort of read my characters. Is I have a general idea of what they look like, um, kind of what their hair color looks like. I kind of know if they're tall or short, thin, muscular, overweight, male or female, what their skin color is. But I don't really like go so in deep in depth to have like a, a, a character image in, 
in mind or something. I know some people like to do that that they you know the, they have Matthew McConaughey in mind when they're when they're writing this this other other thing. Um, seem, seems like I had a one of my other books I think I did have like the celebrity that I kind of kept going back and forth to thinking that that's what they they should look like. But now for the life of me, I can't really think of it. So it couldn't have been that important. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Number five. What is the one sentence synopsis of your book? Okay, that that's that's what they call the the log line. I think that's what they call or a log pitch or something. Um, so what is the one sentence synopsis of a a book? A young man receives a message that he shouldn't receive which leads to a portal that should not exist to on an adventure that he'll never forget or that will change him forever. Something along those lines. Yeah. He gets a message he shouldn't get, finds something that he shouldn't that shouldn't exist, and it takes him on an adventure that he will never forget. That will change him forever. Something along those lines. Um, which is kind of more of a I guess a book blurb sort of thing. It's hard for me because I'm I'm a, a discovery writer, uh, and I'll probably do a video on that m a little more in-depth, maybe even a series of videos because there's a lot to that. But uh, as a discovery writer, um, I don't know how the book ends either. So I can't honestly tell you what the book is about. I can tell you how it starts. I'm, I believe, about halfway through the book. Again, I don't know what the ending is, so maybe... Maybe I'm like three quarters of the way. Maybe I'm five sixths of the way through the book. Uh, I, I don't really know. I don't think I'm that close. I don't feel like I'm, I'm that close. Um, but as a discovery writer, I don't really know what it's about. So all I can do is kind of tell you like how it starts and hope that that gets you interested enough to want to check it out. Uh, let's see. So it is, will your book be self-published or represented, represented by an agency? More than likely self-published. I will probably submit it to a few of the smaller presses because I just like, I do like the idea of like being a hybrid writer, a hybrid writer, someone who is partially self-published and partially traditionally published. I especially like, uh, would like for my short stories to be published in some, some of the magazines or anthologies. Uh, so I submit all my short stories get submitted out. And if nobody really picks them up, then I just self-publish them. There's a long list of my, uh, um, I like think I have like 15 short stories or something on uh, I'm Amazon, or maybe I haven't really published all of them. Um, and so, yeah, this kind of book could be kind of fun to submit to some smaller press or something and see if they, they like it. But I'm fine with self-publishing, too. Uh, question number seven. How long did it take you to write the first draft of your manuscript? Okay, so we get back into the discovery writing. One, I'm not done writing my first draft, so I'm still working on it. And I probably won't have more than like a few drafts. Um, the way that I write, which is sort of the discovery writing or writing into the dark, is a lot, of, a lot of cycling. So I write a little bit and I go back and I kind of, you know, make changes or edits and I go back and I make changes and edits and I kind of keep going and I keep going. So as I'm going along, I am uh, sort of polishing the, the manuscript a, a, as I'm working on it. I will add things if I feel like I need to add them. I'll take some stuff out if I realize they're not working. Um, so I usually do that, and then I will have, like, uh, uh, another one that's sort of geared toward a lot of copy editing where I try and go through. I use, like, Grammarly or something and try and catch all of the, the misspelled words and punctuation and that sort of stuff like that. So I may only have, like, three drafts. And, and most of those are really just sort of like little nitpicky editing kind of things. So I'm, my hope is is to have all this stuff done in that, by the end of the summer. That's, that's my goal. So I kind of give you an idea of um, where that's at. Uh, let's see. So number eight, what other books would you compare this story to? Um, well, and I think, yeah, number nine is who or what inspired you to write the book? Um so yeah, so I'm going to kind of combine those two questions together because they kind of go, go together. Um, one of the things that I liked about the, one of the things that inspired me and that kind of re resembles this is um, uh, Den, Den of Nether Neverwhere. Uh, I, I talked about this in a previous video. That's one of the reasons why I talked about it. Uh, it's, um, 
character by Richard Corbin. Um, he was in Heavy Metal, uh, the movie. Uh, he had he was in Heavy Metal the magazine. Uh, he had his own series of uh, comics and that sort of thing. And so that that character in that world is sort of what I'm I'm kind of drawing my inspiration from as, as I'm writing. Uh, but you know, just like Dan of Neverwhere, it, it, it's also inspired a little bit by uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, The Princess of Mars. It's basically about a guy who gets transported to a, another planet and has to learn how to deal with the creatures there and their weird social customs and goes on adventures and you know that, that sort of thing. Um, there's another series called um, the Green Star series uh, by Lynn Carter. Um, I've read the first two books. Um, and more so with the first book. And again, Under the Green Star, which was the first book, was also inspired by uh, A Princess of Mars. That that one book uh, just seemed to really lead to many other books. And really, The Princess of Mars is just a very old tale. A lot of the old fairy tales, or a lot of old folk tales, especially from uh, the Celts, were about men who got transported into the fairy realm and had to deal with the fairies and deal with their weird rules and, and that sort of thing and going on an adventure uh, and, and that sort of thing. So this notion of people being transported or teleported or, or whatever to other lands with other creatures and other beings and then coming back, that's ancient ancient uh, inspiration but the more modern versions was princess of mars den of neverwhere and uh, under the green star so number 10 what else about your book might pique your reader's interest one i think um i think because it's different i haven't really seen a lot of books like this come out in a while uh, and that's kind of kind of what I, I like doing part of my my pulp fiction sort of writer sort of thing is going back to the past and finding what was popular then what did people like then they don't really see a lot of a anymore and, and just kind of going with that um i think also because it's it is new it is different and i'm just going off on different directions i think a lot of readers will just kind of always be surprised at the where things are going because to be honest i'm surprised and that's one of the fun things about being a discovery writer is i don't know where the story is going to go even any more than my readers do and so i'm surprised so if i'm being surprised if i feel like i'm getting surprised then my readers should also get you know surprised as well so anyway that's the yeah that's the 10 questions on my work in progress um but yeah i'm also working on some short stories i'm uh, coming up with a new character uh in a new world well actually what i'm going to do is take my uh, Yark the Scholar is from this land called Moravia, Moravia or something like that, uh, which is based upon the Slavic lands. And so this new character, uh, which we'll probably talk about a little bit more later on, uh, she is still in those lands. So whereas Yark is traveling the world and he's just an outsider because he's a, a Northman in stranger lands, uh, this character, she's in the, the, still in the Slavic lands. So you kind of get to see a little bit what's going on over there. And working on some more Yark Scholar, Yark the Scholar stories. Uh, that's actually what I'm going to finish up tomorrow, I believe. And then we'll be good to go with that. And so, yeah, kind of keep an eye out for those. Uh, again, there's links down below for Saga the Scout, uh, which, which I hopefully will have a sequel to that one by the end of the year. And then also the uh, Memories of the City. But anyway, uh, I'll talk to you later. And ha hopefully you're having a good and safe Memorial Day weekend. Bye.